Hi everyone, my name is Danny Vol from the Swinburne node of ADAX, the Astronomy Data and Computing Services, and this is a tutorial about MPI. In this tutorial, we will cover an overview of the topic with working examples using the Python package MPI for Pi. The tutorial is structured as follows. First, we will begin with an introduction to background notions of parallel computing. In particular, we will look at the difference between shared memory and distributed memory. Then, we will introduce MPI, the message passing interface. From there, we will cover a number of concepts using working examples. In particular, we will see how to send and receive messages with two types of communication, point-to-point -point communication and collective communication. Before continuing, a disclaimer. We choose Python over C or C++ for simplicity and to avoid the hassle of compiling and linking. The code in some cases is not optimized or follow best practices. The important point is to illustrate the concept. Most of these tools are actually designed and developed for C or C++. Their Python version might not be complete. Now, let's get back to the concepts of shared and distributed memory. Imagine you want to put back together a puzzle made out of a thousand pieces. Doing it by yourself might take you, say, 10 hours. Now, imagine that you try to solve this same puzzle as a team with your friends, all sitting around the table. You can even split everyone into small sub-teams to help coordinate the work. Depending on the size of your team, you will be able to reduce the overall time to solve this puzzle. However, there are things to consider. First of all, given the size of your table, you will reach a limit at which you can no longer fit more people around the workspace. For example, you don't have enough chairs. Furthermore, two teams cannot use the same piece of puzzle at the same time. Finally, you may face issues where sub-teams are not communicating well with one another. The main advantage of solving algorithms with shared memory lies in its simplicity. It is easy to use. On the other hand, it has limited scalability. Moreover, you have a high coherence overhead. As workers grow in number, it becomes trickier to synchronize everyone. In a computer architecture, shared memory can look something like this. Where the workers would be the central processing units, the CPUs, and the table would be the memory. In this context, all CPUs share the memory access. In a distributed memory scenario, each member has its own workspace to work on its portion of the puzzle. In this scenario, the number of tables and chairs is scalable. In other words, we have scalable resources. There is less contention from private memory space. Going back to CPU and memory, in a distributed memory scenario, each couple CPU memory is connected to a network, allowing each member to communicate with each other. In reality, modern computers have many CPU cores. Therefore, we can imagine that each table has not only one member, but that there is rather a team of workers per table. In a computer network environment, it will look something like this. When a team wants to communicate with one another, it sends its message over the network. 